special appendix to the Winyana Mano translator. <coughs> During the time that we were looking through the mock-up and making final corrections or amendments to the Buddha Dharma text in preparation for publication, Venerable Pra Payuto Tan Chao Kun Brahma Gun Born <coughs> sent me an email with the following concise question. In the body of the original Thai text, there is anything, is there anything that you feel is inadequately clear or coherent? My reply was that there is only one subject that I feel is not thoroughly enough explained, especially for English readers, namely the precise definitions for the Pali words Chitta, Vijnana and Mano, including the relationship between these terms along with some associated terminology. Example, Vijnana Dhatu, element of consciousness. Indeed, I had brought this matter up with the author already several years ago. My fear has been that these terms may be misunderstood by students of Buddhism and this misunderstanding consequently may lead to distortions of the teachings. As a result of my reply, the venerable author kindly and diligently put together the following material so that it could be included in this first publication of the English translation of Buddha Dhamma. Normally it would be placed as an appendix to chapter 1, but this would have meant completing redoing the page numbers for the index, a daunting task. It seems sufficient to add it here as an appendix at the end of the book. Please note that this appendix does not exist in the Thai version. <coughs> A. Definition of the term citta. The definition of citta is closely related to the definition of mano, as is evident from the following passage. The term mano refers to citta, mano, manasa, hadaya, pandara, mana, mana, ya, dana, manindriya, vinyana, vinyana, kanda, and Mano Vinyana Dhatu that corresponds with these circumstances. This is what is called mind Mano. Manoti Yang Chitang Mano Manasang Hadayang Pandanang Mano Manayantang Manindriyang Vinyanang Vinyana Kando Taja Mano Vinyana Nan Dhatu Hayang in the commentaries, however, citta is normally defined as follows. The term citta is defined thus. It is called citta because it reflects, meaning that it is fully aware of sense objects. Tanti Ramanang Note that the term be fully aware of vijanati is the verb form of vijnana. This commentarial definition need not be given too much importance. It is added here simply as a supplementary information. B. Distinction between Chitta, Vijnana and Mano. As illustrated above, the meanings of these three terms are basically the same, but in their usage or application, there is some variation in their scope of meaning. The term Vijnana is generally used in a restricted sense, referring exclusively to the factor 
of knowing a sense object at Ramana. It does not include the various kinds of feelings, perceptions, thoughts, etc. that arise simultaneously with such sense contact. For this reason it is normally translated as consciousness. One can say that it is a purely technical term. Vijnana refers to the aggregate of consciousness, Vijnana Kanda, within the five aggregates. It does not include feeling, Vedana, perception, Sanya, and volitional formations, Sankara, which the Abhidharma collectively refer to as mental concomitants, Chaita Sika. The term Chitta is used frequently in the scriptures. It was a common everyday term and it is used both in restricted, specific connotations and in a general comprehensive sense in which it intrinsically encompasses other factors. The Abhidharma uses the term Chitta in a restricted sense corresponding to the term Vijnana of the five aggregates. As mentioned above, the Abhidharma refers to the remaining three mental aggregates, Namakanda, i.e. Vedana, Sanya and Sankara, attributes of the Chitta arising concurrently with the Chitta, collectively as Chaitasika. In everyday language or in colloquial speech, however, it is not necessary to make a distinction separating this factor as the chitta and that factor as a specific mental concomitant. Instead, one can speak in a collective sense by using the single word chitta, which inherently encompasses the mental concomitants. For instance, one can say, develop the mind, chitta, establish the mind, chitta, in mindfulness, etc. In everyday language, the term mano or mana can be used in a broad, wide-ranging sense, similar to the term chitta. But when this term is used in a technical or restricted sense, it refers to the sense base, ayatana, or sense faculty, indriya. It cognizes a mind object, Dhamma Ramana. In this context, the complete terms of Manayatana, sorry, Manayatana and Manindriya are most often used. However, however, moreover, in the Abhidhamma, there is an Explication stating that Mano and Manayatana is equivalent to the constitu constituent consciousness of becoming. Bhava, Bhavanga Chitta. See, a Chitta over and above the five aggregates. As described above, chitta in a strict, narrow sense refers to consciousness, vijnana, as part of the five aggregates, and in a general broad sense, in the context of everyday language, chitta refers to both consciousness and to its associated mental attributes, i.e. feeling, vidana, perception, sunya, and volitional formations, sankara. The remaining mental factors of the five aggregates. To the question whether a chitta exists over and above the five aggregates, one can thus respond succinctly. There exists no chitta over and above the five aggregates. The only state or reality, Sabawa, transcending the five aggregates is what in Pali is called Kanda Vini Mutta, i.e. Nibbana. If, however, one includes things that have no inherent existence, one can say that those things beyond or apart from the five aggregates are the state of transcend transcending the five aggregates, kanda vinimitta, i.e. nibbana, or concepts of designations, punyati, 
because designations are contrived and ultimately do not exist. They are outside of the five aggregates. The Buddha used the expression, the mind reaches the unconditioned, we sankara, we sankara katang. The Buddha used the expression, the mind reaches the unconditioned, we sankara, we sankara gatang chitang, i.e. the mind reaches nibbana. Here one need be careful. People may misinterpret this passage as meaning the, that the mind, citta, accessing or realizing the bana, transcends the five aggregates. There is an uh, explana explication of this passage stating that what is meant here is that the mind does not take hold of a conditioned phenomenon, sankara, as an object of attention. Instead, it cognizes or experiences Nibbāna. When reaching Nibbāna, the nature of the mind is transformed. It is not ordinary attention, but neither does the mind transform into or become Nibbāna. That is all that is meant by this expression. The Vijnana Dhatu and Nibbāna Dhatu in response to the translator's comment, some people believe that arahants after death simply dissolve into Vijnana Dhatu, into the great ocean of consciousness. This belief stems from misunderstanding the Pali term Dhatu, element, property, natural condition. In fact, the term Dhatu does not have any momentous or mysterious meaning. Its meaning is akin to the term sabawa, which can be translated as state of nature, condition of nature, truth of nature. <coughs> Both of these terms refer to that which exists as an aspect of nature, in line with natural laws. No one is truly able to possess, control or govern these things. They exist neither as an autonomous being or nor as a fixed self, ni sata ni vidya. Let us examine the eighteen kinds of elements that we mentioned by the Buddha. <coughs> there are ananda, these eighteen kinds of elements, the high element, chakudatu, the form element, rupadatu, the eye consciousness element, chak Vinyana Dhatu, the ear element Sota Dhatu, the sound element Sada Dhatu, the ear consciousness element Sota Vinyana Dhatu, the nose element Gana Dhatu, the odor element Ganda Dhatu, the nose consciousness element Gana Vinyana Dhatu, the tongue element Jiva Dhatu, the flavor element Rasa Dhatu, the tongue consciousness element, Jiva Vinyana Dhatu. The body element, Kaya Dhatu. The tangible element, Po Ta Ba Dhatu. The body consciousness element, Kaya Vinyana Dhatu. The mind element, Mano Dhatu. The mind object element, Dhamma Dhatu. The mind consciousness element, Mano Vinyana Dhatu. In virtue of knowing and seeing these 18 elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. Hattarasa ko ima ananda datu yo chakku datu rupa datu chakku vinyana datu sota datu sada datu sota vinyana datu gana datu ganda datu gana vinyana datu Jiva Dhatu, Rasa Dhatu, Jiva Vinyana Dhatu, Kaya Dhatu, Vota Ba Dhatu, Kaya Vinyana Dhatu, Mano Dhatu, Dhamma Dhatu, Mano Vinyana Dhatu, Imako Ananda Atterasa Dhatayo Yato Janati Pasati Etavata Piko Ananda Dhatu Kusalo Bhikkhuti Alang Vachana Yati 
Nibbana or the state of nature, Sabawa, referred to as Nibbana, is incorporated in the factor of mind-object elements. Dhammadhatu, the objects of attention focused on by mind consciousness, Mano Vinyana, things known by way of mind consciousness. This is all that the terms Vinyana Dhatu and Nibbana Dhatu amount to. In response to the translator's comment, some people believe that Nibbana Dhatu can be used as a meditation object, as if this is some essential <coughs> transcendent element that even unawakened beings can come into contact with. There is nothing really to this Nibbana or Nibbana Dhatu, which is used as a meditation object. It is not referring to genuine Nibbana itself, but rather to a concept of Nibbana that people have learned and understood on an intellectual level. It is possible to reflect on this concept of Nibbana and use it as an object of meditation. A discussion of the Noor Puru In response to the translator's comment, in some tra traditions, the Thai expression Puru, literally Noor, seems to refer to some kind of mystical state of consciousness or knowledge. For the most part, this Thai expression is used as a translation of the Pali term Winyu. Again, this term does not have any special or extra no extraordinary meaning. It was used in everyday language, referring to a wise person, a learned person, a discreet person, etc.